Hi there! This is a bonus video to part two of our logic series. In it, we'll look at some examples of how necessary and sufficient conditions work. It won't answer all of your questions, but I hope it will start to give a feel for how these situations are different. To review, this is probably the simplest version of necessary and sufficient conditions that we saw in the main video. A is a necessary condition for B if, and only if, A being false means that B is definitely false. On the other hand, A is a sufficient condition for B if, and only if, A being true means that B is definitely true. Remember that the syntax of an argument can make this hard to tell easily. In this video, all of our examples will have exactly the same syntax, but you will still need to think carefully about some of them. I'm borrowing these examples from Norman Swartz at Simon Fraser University. He has a website at the link below. There are so many teachers and lecturers on the internet who put their expertise online in so many different ways. This is just a reminder that if my videos don't give you what you are looking for, then keep looking for someone who can explain to you what it is you want to learn. Back to the maths though. These examples will seem very trivial. They will seem kind of boring in a way, but that's fine because we want to focus on what makes these actually different, not worry about the situations they're explaining. That said, there are going to be a few spicy twists as we go through these examples, because logic is meant to be used in the real world, and the real world is more complex than logic, certainly more complex than what we have seen so far. Here is the full list of 22 examples that we will go through, but you'll see they're arranged into sets of two to four very similar questions. Notice that in all the questions we're using the letter X for the subject in each sentence. X may be a number or a person or whatever the sentence is about. If this makes it hard to understand the examples for you, then let me know in the comments. But this kind of language is quite common in logic. We'll look at the questions in groups, but if you want to try them all now, then pause the video and have a look. And just answer for each statement, is it true or false? Oh. Let's start with question one. It says that x being a square is a sufficient condition for x being a rectangle. In these first examples, x is going to be a shape of some kind. Number one is true. All squares also meet the definition of a rectangle, a four-sided shape with four right angles. So if x is a square is true, this guarantees that x is a rectangle is true. So a is a sufficient condition for b. Number two asks about the necessary condition. Does x being a square make a necessary condition for x being a rectangle? This one is false. We have to ask, does x being a square being false guarantee that x is a rectangle is false? And the answer is no. There's lots of rectangles that are not squares. Three and four reverse a and b in our relationship. For three, is x being a rectangle a sufficient condition for x being a square? This is also false because it claims that if x is a rectangle is true, that guarantees that x is a square is also true. And we already saw there are many rectangles that are not squares. Finally, in number four, is x being a rectangle a necessary condition for x being a square? This will be true. We saw above that all squares meet the definition of a rectangle. So if x is not a rectangle, then we can guarantee that it's not a square. And this is editing, Adam, because apparently I forgot to write the part of the script where I asked, can you see the relationship between the different conditions here? It's something we saw in the main video. Pause if you would like to think about it. But again, we see this idea that if A is necessary for B, then B is sufficient for A. For example, in question one, X is being a square is a sufficient condition for X is being a rectangle. And for the same reason, in question four, X is being a rectangle must be a necessary condition for X is being a square.
We can kind of use the same piece of evidence to justify both. A square is a four-sided shape with four right angles. This will be part of our explanation. Although this is an oversimplification and very little is this easy to explain in the real world. Here are the next four examples from Swartz Notes and I could easily have changed these examples to be something else, but I chose not to. But why would I consider changing them at all, you ask? Well, let's look. Five and six ask if X's being a mother is a necessary or sufficient condition for X's being female. And seven and eight ask if X's being female is a necessary or sufficient condition for X's being a mother. According to Swartz's answer key, five and eight are both true because all mothers are female. So if X is a mother is true, then X is female must also be true. And if X is not female, then that means they are definitely not a mother. Six and seven are false because not all females are mothers. These answers are fine, but in the 25 years since Swartz wrote this, certain ideas have changed about social roles and there may be some people who challenge these definitions. Some others will say that this is like challenging the definition of a square, but some will not agree with that. I'm not here to comment. The point is though that the meaning of words comes before logic. Logic is just a machine which works with the premises we put into it. And when you learn logic, you're looking at the machinery, not the premises. The reason I did not change these examples to make them safer is that they're an excellent reminder that some of our most complex problems cannot be fully solved just using logic because logic has no values. But once you know your values, then logic can help you. Let's return to the comfortable certainty of the number line, shall we? Greater than or less than? But these examples aren't going to be completely easy either. Question nine asks, does X's being greater than 15 make a sufficient condition for X's being less than 20? In other words, if the number is greater than 15, does that guarantee that it's less than 20? Clearly, the answer again is no. There are lots of numbers that are greater than 15 and also greater than 20. But can you change one word in number nine and make this statement true? For question 10, we claim that X being greater than 15 is a necessary condition for X being less than 20. In other words, if the number is not greater than 15, then it cannot be less than 20. This is again false. We can make a number that is less than 15, which is also less than 20. So A being false does not guarantee that B is false. In question 11, we want to know if being less than 20 guarantees that it is greater than 15. And we can say the same thing. There are numbers that are less than 15 and also less than 20. So this is again false because A being true does not guarantee that B is true in this case. And finally, in question 12, is a number being less than 20 necessary for it to be greater than 15? In other words, if the number is not less than 20, does this guarantee that it's not greater than 15? And this is false again. We can make A false while B is still true. So the number is more than 20 and still more than 15. Notice I'm using the same statement to support each inverse example, nine and 12 and the other pair 10 and 11. This shows again this relationship of necessity in one direction and sufficiency in the other. Of course, there are other ways to explain all of these examples and these very quick and short explanations of mine might not be the best for you and certainly aren't the best in general. But we can see that even fairly simple situations of higher and lower numbers need careful attention. Let's look at a few more examples. In number 13, it's a sufficient condition question. So we're asking, does A being true guarantee that B is true? In other words, if a number is less than 12, does this guarantee that it's less than 20? And yes, it does. If a number is less than 12, then it's definitely going to be less than 20 because of how the number line works. So this one is true. 
What about question 14? Is being less than 12 necessary for being less than 20? No, it's not. The numbers 13, 14, 15 and so on are not less than 12, but they are still less than 20. So A being false does not guarantee that B is false in this case. The same argument can apply for number 15. If x is less than 20, this does not guarantee that x is less than 12, because 13 to 19 are not less than 12, but still less than 20. And maybe you can see where this is going for number 16. It's the inverse of number 13. Is x being less than 20 necessary for x to be less than 12? Yeah. If a is false, b is guaranteed to be false. In other words, if a number is not less than 20, then that guarantees that it is not less than 12. Again, I'm not saying these are the best explanations for these examples. I'm just using a very quick line to show that these come in pairs. But what's different about these four examples compared to the last slide? They look very similar, but two of these are true, while all of those were false. Pause if you want to think about why this might be. In these examples, both of the qualities are stated less than, less than 12 and less than 20. On the previous slide, the qualities were different, greater than and less than. And this is what makes these two sets of questions different. I hope you can understand my explanation of these number examples, but don't worry if you don't. And I'll admit something to you. Logic is not my day job. So while writing this video, I had to check my explanations and my answers to these questions more than once. And I had to change some of them and I'm still worried I've made a mistake. And if I have, please let me know. This is not stuff that human brains take in easily. So don't worry if it takes you a through runs through to get it. And it really won't start to feel natural unless you really start to use it for something. The remaining six questions are in matched pairs. First, is having two arms sufficient or necessary for being human? Both of these examples are false again, but for very different reasons. Two arms is not sufficient for humanity because lots of animals have two arms. So if A is true, this does not guarantee that B is true. For question 18, two arms is not necessary for humanity because a human who loses an arm or is born with more than two arms somehow is still a human. So A being false does not guarantee that B is false. You could make inverse examples of these just like we saw with the earlier slides. In the same way, Abstract situations lead to abstract reasons. 19 and 20 talk about human motivations. Is X wanting to do something a sufficient or a necessary condition for X to do that thing? In these examples, X is a person again, and they want to take some action, A. Take a moment to think about what kind of answer you might give. And of course, is each one true or false? In fact, both of these are false once again. If we assume that X is a person who wants to do something, then it's clear that sometimes people cannot do things that they want to do. Something else will stop them. So wanting is not sufficient on its own. Just because you want something is true doesn't mean that you will do that thing is also true. On the other hand, sometimes people do things that, if you ask them before, they would tell you they do not want to do but they do it anyway. And in this case, wanting to do something is not necessary for actually doing it. And if wanting to do something is false, this doesn't guarantee that doing it is false. When we make this more general, we can see that this could apply to any living creature in any situation. So although we can be clear in our answer about whether or not X wanting to do something is a necessary or sufficient condition for X doing that thing, we really can't say more about the subject than that. Finally, 21 and 22 are both true. This is an example of a biconditional definition in action because A and B imply each other. In 21, an equilateral rectangle is a rectangle where all sides are the same length, which is a square. So A being true guarantees that B is true. It is a sufficient condition. In 22, if a shape is not an equilateral rectangle, then it cannot be a square. A being false guarantees that B is false. So it is a necessary condition too. 
So that is a quick set of examples to just show the character of necessary and sufficient conditions in some different situations. And I'd like to thank Norman Swartz again for putting those examples up on his site at Simon Fraser University. I know I say this a lot, but you really shouldn't worry if that was your first time through this and it wasn't all clear to you. In fact, you really shouldn't worry if almost none of it was clear to you. As we saw in the last bonus video, these things are really abstract and they aren't at all how we react to things in the everyday world. So it's going to take you a few runs at it before it starts to make sense. And let's just go back to question nine. I asked how to change just one word in this example to make it a true example. And the word you need to change is greater. You need to change it to less so that the question reads, X is being less than 15 is a sufficient condition for X is being less than 20. This will be true. And it changes the example to be more like question 13, which is of course true as well. Notice now they're both saying less than. What happens if we change the other end? What if we say if X is being greater than 15 is a sufficient condition for X is being greater than 20? This will still be false. And I would invite you to try and make a set of four number line examples where all of the comparisons are greater than and see how that compares to the other sets we saw in this video. Hi, hope you found that interesting. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. If you prefer shorter videos, you can find this cut up on our other channel just up there. But whatever you do, please keep learning something because no matter who you are or how old you are, every day really is a school day. Bye for now.